Hello, my wonderful people. I trust you are doing very well. You are welcome to another session with us today. We are talking about a very interesting topic. I must confess one of my favorite topics in constitutional law and administrative law. So we are talking about natural justice. But before we zoom to the main action, if this is your first time visiting our page, kindly do us the honest by subscribing to this page so that all subsequent videos can come to you. You can also send us a message, um, can share, you feel free to share, you can comment, you can like, Let's just get interactive. Good. So once we have that of out of the way, let's get into business. So what is natural justice? Yes. So, so really we'll be talking about introduction to natural justice, the Odi or Trump Power Term Rule and the Nemo Judex in Corsa Sua. Very, very interesting Latin. Um, topics that we'll be discussing briefly. So stay put and enjoy. Good. So when we talk about natural justice, we are really talking about the um, fundamental rules of justice developed by the courts to safeguard the rights of individuals. Now, um, let me try and break it down. Really, when we talk about natural justice, we are talking about equity. We, we see we are talking about fairness. We are talking about reasonableness. We are so um for those that may have a, a bit of a background in you know equity and the introduction of common law and all that you would understand that there were times where the procedures provided in the common law when were unable to meet you know all the all the needs of the day because there were always gaps in the law that you know um citizens needed remedy for and the law could not make provision for those gaps because of the obvious um, reasons and there were times where the the, the, the common law was so strict that it, there was just no flexibility. And there were times where the applicability of the common law was just unreasonable, was unfair. There was no equity in it. So this, that, that uh, brought to bear the whole idea of doctrines of equity and doctrines of equity and uh, natural justice are uh, always around that same idea where we are talking about um, fairness. Okay, so let me let, let me uh, be quick to also clarify. So we talk about, let me be done with that, but we talk about fairness, we talk about um, equality and all that. But that is another, so just so that I don't confuse, when we talk about natural justice, we have it in, in two folds. One is equity, fairness, reasonableness, which I have talked about, which normally works with the doctrines of um, equity. And then the other bit here is which our focus is on, which is that the fundamental rules of justice that have been developed by the courts understand that the doctrines of equity and then the other bit of natural justice that I talked about were not were were actually from the Lost Chancellor. If you have read a bit about the history of common law, you would have heard of the Lost Chancellor. You know that where the um in times where the courts were not helpful, you know citizens would go before the the Lost Chancellor and then pray that. Um, he intervenes in the situation and those situations it was just unreasonable for you know certain judgments you know to be passed and all that but under this bit of natural justice we are talking about so really I, I, from the onset it was actually dispensed by the Lord justice but as time went on as time went on uh, all these ideas now became part of the court system so Mostly in 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 court in UK, they are dispensing common law and then equity. They are dispensing common law and the doctrines of because now um, you had a court dispensing both. So here, when we talk about natural justice, we are talking about all the fundamental principles that you know have been developed by the courts to safeguard the rights of individuals and ensure that justice is done. 
So we are, we are really saying that now the doctrines of equity and all that, that are dispensed by the courts, the whole idea behind it is that justice must be done. And you see, when, when you understand the history of common law, you know, and how, you know, strict it was and how it was at times the law was rather dispensing injustice and all that you would really appreciate why natural justice came because the, the idea was that you know, um, certain concepts were need not be law, but they, they were just fair. They were just reasonable that certain things ought to be done and not necessarily be you know, um, applied by the strict rule of the law because the law will be saying something, but when you examine the situation, you would know that, no, this situation, if we apply, you know, reason, if we apply fairness, we would reach a conclusion that is more substantial, you know, justice to the people. So that is the whole idea of natural justice. So in this sense of natural justice, we are not talking about the early form of natural justice that were dispensed by the, you know, the law chance that we are talking about the natural justice that have now, uh, developed over the years and are now being dispensed by the courts good so this um, natural justice that we are talking about is in two folds we have the nemo judex in course as well which is that you should not be a judge in your own course and then the other part is the odi Uttering part, which is that listen to the other side. These are these concepts are very very fundamental to the dispensing of justice. So in our various courts, these principles are very very key. That if you are able to prove that one of these principles were breached by a party or even the courts, you can get a matter uh, thrown out because we believe that these are very 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 key principles that you know must be observed in dispensing justice so most of it are not and in, and in practice you always have you know lawyers looking out for some of these things just to be sure that any of these things has been breached just to be sure that uh was the person a judge in his own course and here we are not only talking about courts it could be a, a committee it could be a disciplinary committee a commission or a board where a party who is involved in the matter is also a chair or also a member of the committee so not necessarily in courts it could also be in court where the judge who is sitting in the matter has an interest in it or probably the wife or the sister or the daughter is involved all these things goes to affecting the justice that will be dispensed by the court. So in order to avoid, you know, a situation where the court is seen as being biased and all that, these principles, you know, have been laid down over the years. These principles are very, very old. They are not recent. They are very, very old principles so that they have, you know, developed and, and metamorphosed from the early days where they were being discharged by the Lord Chancellor's now to, you know, principles that are being, you know, dispensed by the courts. So here we are talking about, and when we talk about natural justice, they, it has two legs. Natural justice has two legs. The first leg is don't be a judge in your own court, course, I should say. And the other leg is that listen to the other side. In trying to adjudicate a matter, make sure that you listen to the other side else you know, the judgment that you may render may be set aside or may not be the best because you didn't wait to hear the full story. And the, and, and, and normally you will hear in, in, in lectures where, you know, um, it is said in the Bible that when, when God came and uh, after Adam had ate the fruit, God was very much aware that Adam had ate the fruit. But when he came, he asked Adam, where are you? God knew where Adam was. God knew what Adam had done. But God asked Adam, where are you? What have you done? And Adam was hiding. The, the, the situation is, it's not that God was not aware, but God was allowing Adam, you know, to, to say his side of the story before dispensing justice. So even from the, from the Bible, from the beginning of creation, we have these uh, principles always at play. God. Now let's continue. So in, in this lesson, we'll try and then take one and then uh, just so that we don't have a very lengthy session, we'll just take one and then we'll discuss the other one in another session. 
I hope you are cool with that. Good. Good. So the very first bit that we are talking about is the Nemo Judex in Kosasua. Now, this rule of natural justice requires that the person shall not be a judge in his own cause. So, meaning that where you have a proprietary interest or where you have a financial interest or where there's a relational interest in a subject matter, we are saying that you should not be involved in the decision making. So, if you are sitting on a board that is investigating a contract, where the company being investigated is your company or you have shares in that company, we are saying that you should recuse yourself. Don't sit on that um, particular matter because the probability that you'll be very biased is high. Also in relational matters, which I earlier did mention. So we are talking about a situation where the matter involves your wife, the matter involves your husband, involves your, your in-law, involves your son, your daughter. The probability that you'll be biased and you know you won't, you know, view the matter in an objective manner will be very, very high. So the position is that it is better you recuse yourself, you know, in the decision making process. And also where you have a proprietary interest. So maybe it's it's a land and um maybe you have an interest there, it's a house, or maybe you have an you know interest there. We are saying that recuse yourself in determining who the owner of the land is. So maybe you have rented in a property that uh, at the moment is it being contested as to who the ownership is. The probability that you know you'll be biased will be there, be there because you probably rented it from a landlord whose ownership uh, is being contested. So we are saying that in all these situations, it is better that you recuse yourself. And this rule is not only applicable to the courts, it applies to you know quasi-judicial bodies and even administrative bodies. So in the government uh, sectors, all the, you know, the disciplinary committees, the various panels, commissions of the inquiry, you know, all the disciplinary boards in all the various committees that you can ever think of in the government sector, we are saying that you would have to recuse yourself if you either have a proprietary interest, a financial interest, or a relational interest. Make sure that you recuse yourself so that you don't affect the determination of it. Now, for proprietary interest, we can see the very popular case of dimes versus you know property grand junction can aware Lord Lord Chancellor, where the Lord Chancellor who had shares in the defendant company sat on appeal involving the company. So the, the judge had shares in the company and there was a determination on the affairs of the company. And um, it was it, it was determined that it was possible the judge could be biased because the judge held shares. The judge had an interest here. It was shares. So the judge had an interest in the company. So the probability that the judge would be very biased was very, very high. So but this case was in the UK. Um, hopefully, hopefully our judges will, would also, you know, determine same. But of course, we would have to understand that the Ghanaian setting, when it comes to family, it's it's a bit, you know, complicated because we all seem to, you know, relate to one another. You know, uh, your uncles, cousins, sister, brother. I'm sure you know that. So that, but of course, we will get to, you know, determine the test in in. In coming to a conclusion whether you know there is the, the, the likelihood of bias or there is actually you know bias in respect of a proprietary interest. So it could be you have an interest in, in shares, an interest in a land, an interest in a house, you know, all those are proprietary interest. Good. Now for financial interest, we can also look at the case of R versus Sussex Justice, where where a clerk of one of the judges belonged to a firm of sorry, who who were prosecuting a civil claim in respect of the same case which the defendant stood trial. And here the, the clerk retired with the judges and the defendant was um, found guilty. The court held that as the clerk who had a financial interest in the matter had gone inside with the judges, the decision would be set aside. So you see here, um, the assumption was that the judge who had a financial interest in the in the company may have, you know, swayed the judges in a way, or may have, you know, tried to uh, maybe speak to the judges, you know, try to convince the judges that oh, they should look at the matter in um, in one way or the other. And you would, and this is even more serious because here, it says that there was 
this was so even though the clerk did not actually take part in the decision making and was not consulted by the judges. So you see how serious this is. In this case, it's just about a, a clerk who has a, um, a financial interest in a company, you know, and this matter was before a judge where the clerk was working. And, you know, the, 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 the courts were of the, of the opinion that once, you know, this clerk was frequenting the room of the, of the judges, it was possible he may have, you know, um, find a way to, you know, speak to them about the matter, you know, try to sway them into, uh, which may not be true, but the mere fact that this clerk had an interest and was also, you know, in the chambers of the judges, it was possible he may, may have, may or may not have done something. And that, you know, in itself could be a way to sway the judges to do otherwise than justice. And so, you know, the, the, the assumption was that there was the likelihood that bias may have occurred. So that affected the case. And so the decision was set aside. Quite, quite, quite interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering how that would work in a, in a Ghanaian setting because, I mean, in most of the courts, you know, you have clerks who are, I mean, if you're all being honest, they, they, you know, they relate to people, you know, they have families who have mattered before them. And I mean, it's, I don't know. I'm not sure how, you know, the, the judicial service may be dealing with these things, whether they ask, you know, clerks to recuse themselves or matters that appear before them or, or, or what the procedure may be. But in UK, you know, they, they thought that even to the extent where the clerk did, was not even involved in the decision making, they believe that there could be the possibility of bias. Good. So um, now this same rule also applies where a decision maker is related to one of the parties I've already talked about in the very popular cases, ex party, Agbesi, Awusu. This is a case that you would not want to forget. And the simple fact of the case is that, you know, a high court judge, you know, held meetings with a, a certain faction, faction to a dispute in respect of, a, I think it was a, a chief tenancy matter was a chief tenancy matter in the Volta region. And then this judge held, you know, a certain meetings with some factions. In fact, if you read the case, um, it, it was not even that the, the, the judge actually discussed in, you know, in details these matters. But I mean, the assumption was that once the judge who was hearing the matter had held discussions with a faction, the probability that the judge was biased was, was very, very, very high. And in that case, what is, is notable is that, you know, the, the judge started making certain comments and justice with, you know, um, was suggesting that it's possible that um, his determination of the matter will be swayed because um, of the meeting he held with the other faction and probably uh, had tilted, you know, um, his opinion in favor of that particular faction. So uh, because of that reason, the idea was that the judge would be biased or was biased. Now you would know that even in this case, the judge did not relate directly to these persons. He only held a meeting, you know, with a faction. So there are situations where it could be the wife of the judge, it could be, you know, the daughter, the husband, and there are a number of cases that, you know, uh, try to talk about situations uh, like this. Good. Now, the, the Nemo Judaism Cosa Swap principle also uh, comes in where the judge has a full knowledge of the facts. This is also very important. So there may be situations where the judge is already aware of the fact or the judge has already been briefed of the fact. And because of that, they, it may prejudice the mind of the judge. So as the judge is coming, he has already made up a decision. So nothing said by the other party would sway him from you know uh, deciding otherwise so where there's full knowledge of, of a fact you know a judge could be um disqualified from sitting because the assumption is that the judge cannot be um partial and the the locus classicals for this principle is also the expert like we say i was where saying the judge you know, held the meeting with the faction, and so was probably very much aware of, of the entire of the entire facts. So um, the probability that uh, he will not be biased um, was very very high. 
But um, one thing, so I think what is important for me to clarify is that here we are talking about foreknowledge of the facts and not foreknowledge of the law. Guys, I'm saying that foreknowledge of the facts, what this means is that the judge held a meeting with a faction where they explained to him that, okay, so we belong to the Anglo tradition. They belong to all white tradition. Um, our ancestors thousand years ago came from um, Nigeria, King Agokoli, you know, all the story, you know, and all that. And then we came to settle. So he, he has been briefed about the facts. Now, that is different from a foreknowledge of the law. The foreknowledge of the law is on how having an idea on how to solve a particular case. That is different because, of course, I mean, the, the judge has been trained with the laws to have an idea on how to solve a particular case. And, you know, in order to have an idea to solve a particular case, you may have to know, know certain facts about it. So, yes, the judge may have an idea of the law that may deal with a particular matter, but the judge may not know the particular facts that is coming before it. I hope the, the, the difference is clear because the judge, is, the law sits in the bosom of the judge, so the judges are supposed to know the law. So they already have a full knowledge of the law, but the judges may not know the particular facts that are coming before him. It's possible that case may have appeared before him uh, in another matter Sorry, I mean, it's possible the facts may have been, you know, um, stated to him in a different matter or uh, multiple cases, but this particular one, the judge may not be aware. So the judge may already know the law that applies to that particular case and not necessarily, you know, um, the facts of it. And you can see this in, in this interesting case of Kwame versus Queen, where our very own, you know, excellent Olin, you know, you know, was was um, impeached to have been biased. And the whole idea was that um, Olenu, um, when he was a lawyer, dealt with uh, some cases involving the Oswal at land. And then when he went to, uh, um, he was called to the to the bench, uh, similar you know, cases came before him, not the same, but similar cases involving the Oswal at land came before him. And then the, there were the um, allegation that he would be biased because as a lawyer, he dealt in Oswal Atalans. But the conclusion was that he knew the law when it came to the Oswal Atalans, but not the particular facts on all Oswal Atalans because for all Oswal Atalans, the particular facts may be different. Maybe for one end, it may be um, a family fighting over a land. For another, it may be a stool. For another, it may be a chief priest. For another, it may be a brother. So the facts may be different, but the law in dealing with the Oswal Atalans may be one. So kindly note that here we are talking about foreknowledge of the facts and not foreknowledge of the law. I hope I have explained it very well. Good. So what is the test in determining whether a judge or whether a person has been a judge in his own course? So normally we look at or the test is that you must prove that there is real likelihood of bias. Check something. Okay. So yes. So you must prove that there is real likelihood of bias, not suspicion. Guys, in the UK and elsewhere, suspicion could be enough. But in Ghana, you must prove that there is real likelihood of bias. So there must be real likelihood of bias as opposed to suspicion. So in Ghana, we, we have the case of Attorney General versus Salah, where you know um some judges were, you know, um there was suspicion that they had met with certain parties um in a in a case and the attorney general was alleging that the, the judges may be, may be biased. And the position was that it is not in, enough to say um, you saw a judge, you know, in, in a particular meeting or at a particular place where the other party was also that you must have concrete evidence to prove that indeed discussions went on and the judge was informed or had a full knowledge of the facts you know, or there were either a relational, proprietary, or a financial interest, you really must come in with, with facts and not just mere um, uh, suspicion. So in Attorney General versus Salah, it was said that it was not enough, or it, or it just was not enough to allege that the judges um, 
the, one of the judges had um, a sister whose whose husband was involved in the matter. That in itself was not enough. You must prove that that husband actually met with the judge, discussed the matter with the judge, and the judge, you know, um, came to a conclusion that he would instead of do justice, um, do otherwise. But however, in um, expert Agbese also, it was was very very clear that there will be real likelihood of bias. And in that case, the demeanor of the judge, his justice, his manners, his comments all suggested that the judge would probably be very, very biased. So mere suspicion is not enough. You would you would just have to, you know, come in with more, more facts. So then as I've already mentioned, the fact that a judge knows the party is not enough. I mean, therefore, I mean, judges are also human beings. They have relations. You no, know, their relations also have friends. They also have relations. So the fact that I may be related to a judge does not mean if I appear before him, you know, they'll be biased. Unless you can prove, unless by the comments of the judges, the way the decisions are going in every every application, I am winning. You are losing. Even when I have the the worst, you know, motion or affidavit, or even when my arguments cannot be sustained, in law, I am winning. Then you can make the case that mm, this judge. Is actually being biased because of the relationship he has with it with this other part. But I understand that in the UK and elsewhere, just suspicion is enough. Just by the fact that I am related to the judge, it's enough for um the judge to recuse himself or whatever decision he comes up with be set aside. <laughs> so then again, the fact that a judge has tried you know, to settle a matter between parties is also not enough. And uh, same with uh, Quest versus Quatrain, where, you know, only, you know, as a judge had tried to, you know, settle the matter amicably before the parties, it failed. And now the, the matter came to the court for Justice Olin to settle the matter. And they were of the view that since he had attempted to settle the matter, it's possible he will be biased. But um, the the judge, the court was of the opinion that the fact that he had attempted to settle the matter amicably earlier was not enough grounds to prove that Justice Olin was going to be biased. So in Ghana, the test is is, is quite high. That the test is, is not very low. So before you go around, you know, accusing the chief justice, you know, of bias and all that, be sure that you have a very concrete, you know, evidence, you know, to what you are saying. Either than that, you know, it would it would it would, it would really amount to um nothing. So that is that on Nemo Judex in course as well. Let me see. Okay, um, I would not want to make the, the session very lengthy. So we'll do a part two of this where we'll also discuss the audio trend part of it. So just check that one out. So once again, thank you guys for uh, spending time to watch this video. I hope you found it very useful. If you have any question, you can ask. Um, if there's any clarity you need, you know, we can always give it to you. So kindly subscribe and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.